going to do next. And uh, the good thing about this uh, event is we have some great speakers. The bad thing is I'm on stage too much. Um, so we're going to give you a little bit of a break. But we're about to start a new cycle, which is on our research. First of all, I want to recognize you saw our VP of research, uh, Larry Bassinet, uh, one of our analysts in the back, Lola Kharia-Leva. And believe me, it's not easy to say that. You have to learn how to roll the K. So um, these folks have worked uh, very hard to build a research agenda year over year. We're going to do two studies, uh, I'm sorry, three studies uh, You know uh, that one is being currently conducted. We're going to give you sort of an insight into where it's going. All right, and then two that we, we published last year that got quite a bit of press but haven't been presented here in North America. All right, so uh, I'm going to call uh, up Hudson Global uh, is doing a study on brand management and employee brand management particularly. I'm going to call up Tony Martin to uh, present that study. Then I'm going to be back because I was part of the, the studies from last year uh, on uh, the cost of a bad reputation and also uh, talking about tying HR data into business outcomes. All right, and we've got some pretty interesting findings from all three of these. So without further ado, Tony Martin. Hey, Tony. How you doing? All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I promise I'll try and make this brief <laughs> and somewhat entertaining. Um, so at, as Elliot mentioned, we're uh, currently in the process of conducting a uh, research that uh, we're going to be producing a, a in, shared, in partnership with Shared Expertise, a white paper in June uh, on the research topic of employer branding. Um, so really, the, uh, the, the back in February of 2014, we started the research. And it's really a how-to guide on how to improve your employer branding and leverage uh, a better result from it. So some of the key uh, areas that, um, that came from the analysis were really just a definition around employer brand and talent brand. So um, it's still out there today that there's sort of uh, different variations on how to define it, what the definition is, what people perceive it to be. Um, so part of that is really sort of working internally within your organization to make sure that you have a consistent uh, standardized approach to it and then making sure that everybody understands what it is and how to move forward with it. Um, part of the key elements of it are with regards to the ownership, uh, promotion, future plans, the strategy behind it, uh, working through um, not just the employer brand but the talent brand. So uh, being a recognized organization from a marketing standpoint uh, doesn't always translate to from you know the candidate side and the talent aspect. So you want to make sure that you have a consistent sort of 360 view of your organization for both your customers as well as uh, you know, future prospective candidates that want to work for your organization. Um, and then also distinguishing between um, the, 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 uh, the proaction, uh, the proactivity of working towards building that strategy, facilitating it, and then the execution, and most importantly, working to make sure that you're tracking those results. Um, as you know, good segue in, the big data discussion just a few minutes ago really attributes to understanding and making sure that you have some sort of metrics around what the results are from your employer brand. Uh, it is a little bit tricky at times to sort of measure those, and part of the research study and, and the white paper is going to help you to identify those key metrics that you want to want to measure. Um, the methodology behind it was really uh, there was one-on-one -on -one interviews conducted with some top brands, uh, for example, Disney, um, KPMG, Cisco, Microsoft. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one interviews were conducted with those companies to really identify how do they go about um, promoting their brand within the talent community and what are some of the strategies that they use and some of the vehicles and mechanisms. Uh, in addition, shared expertise uh, went out and sent surveys to about 328 global um, uh, customers within their database uh, to identify what they would consider themselves as a top brand and also what their initiatives were. So through a survey of one to five, five being the best, uh, we took the results of those that graded four and five uh, to, to be considered as a top brand. 
So from, a, from two perspectives, you're, you're going to see some of those results in a little bit of uh, how they perceive themselves as a top brand and some of the things that they do that separate them from other brands. Um, the other piece is with regards to how those companies were identified. So there isn't currently sort of a Fortune 500 list out there today of who is a top brand or who are the top brands. So it's still a little bit of a, in the marketplace, it's still a little bit of uh, a challenge to identify what constitutes a top brand. So part of the survey was obviously um, looking at those brands and how they perceive themselves, but also looking at companies like Glassdoor, um, Working Mother Magazine and their 100 Best, uh, as well as um, Best Places to Work. So taking some, uh, some arbitrary information as well and considering those companies as part of the list really sort of gave us a well-rounded uh, research methodology. And then from there, the, uh, the results show a, a very clear distinction. You'll see some of the, the metrics that we're going to produce today. Um, of those top brands, uh, really the distinction between those compared to other brands, um, both in sort of their strategy, uh, what they do, how they do it, um, and then more importantly, uh, how that can translate to helping you going forward with, uh, with leveraging your brand. We talked about the background, so let's get into some of the key findings. So from an employer brand perspective, 72% uh, of those considered to be a top brand um, are actually using the methodologies that we're going to talk about in some of the, the, uh, the avenues and, and some of the uh, strategies that, uh, that we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, more importantly, um, to be considered a top brand isn't necessarily uh, someone's opinion of you. It really is, uh, again, it's, it's sort of the results and how they're defining uh, the attraction that you're getting from candidates both in the, the, the market as well as in the retention. Um, so why is it considered important? So you'll see that almost 80% um, in value and uh, again, 80% in practice show that it's a consistent and important mechanism in not only attracting top candidates, but uh, keeping the talent. And why is it becoming more important as we start to see you know, the demand for talent grow and increase over the coming years? It's going to be really important to set your company out apart from the pack and really identify how you can make it sort of more of a cultural experience to attract that talent to bring it within your organization. The other piece of it is uh, three quarters of the other employees um, in the brand company see it as an increasingly important. So not only is it for employees that are, are candidates that are not part of your organization, but also current employees are looking at your brand every day and making sure that it's something that they want to continue to be a part of and maintain you know, a relationship with. So it's just as important from a retention standpoint as it is from an attraction perspective. Um, so starting with, it's really about creating a strategy and your value proposition. So when you look at what's going to draw top candidates and top talent to your organization, um, twice as many employers that have a defined and documented employer brand strategy are more successful to attract and retain top talent than those who do not. So it sounds simple, you know, just put it down on a piece of paper, here's our employee value brand and here's how we're going to attract people. But it really is just like any other initiative. So when you talk about RPO when that first starts or an MSP or anything within an organization, it really, it, it involves senior leadership, it involves, it involves executive leadership, and it's moving all the way down the chain. So it's buying in from the organization for every hiring manager and making sure that they understand what it is that they're talking to with, when they speak with candidates and why it's important. It's really about promoting the organization. Nearly one half of the companies that uh, have top brands have stated that uh, um, their EVP is up to date. So again, it's, it's a continuously evolving, it's not a, Let's create it once and sort of put it on a shelf. It's about updating it and making sure that it's attractive in the current marketplace and how the marketplace shifts and changes. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment about that. And then also it's about brands that not to be considered top brands only, but uh, that less than 20% of them, of the top brands, uh, have EVPs nearly 50% of the time. So it's moving from a uh, just a, a sort of a um, a suggestion or something that's going to attract talent you know, quickly when you need them to something that's really more about an organizational shift and a change and making sure that they adopt it 
and your organization continues to grow and improve with it. As I talked about, CEO sponsorship is extremely important. Um, it starts at the top and works its way down, so working to, to create that employer brand. Um, and then having that CEO, the C-suite, involved in that employer brand, so not just in the strategy and the development of it, but ensuring that it's facilitated, that it's communicated throughout the organization. And then top brands consider that their CEO or president sponsorship um, are more important than, than even HR department. So although it's probably gonna be executed by your HR departments, it's important that you have that executive sponsorship from all parts of the stakeholder community to really promote and endorse the, the brand, both internally and externally. Um, so you wanna make sure that it's a partnership within all of your organization and that uh, they're driving that continuous improvement. On average, the top employer brands see results uh, almost 52% of the time. So if by investing in employer brand propositions, um, it's really gonna increase your attraction and retention uh, by almost 50%. So, and it's, it varies on the investment. So it's not about how much you invest, it's about where you invest it and how much you, or how much time you invest in it. So you wanna make sure that it's, it's a strategic plan and that you're using your money wisely so that you get the best return on your investment. So top brands use many social media channels. Um, interestingly enough, there's a few here. So you know, obviously you'll see some of the, the common names that you'd expect, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're starting to see in, in a few of our clients, we're starting to see much more use within YouTube um, to commercialize and promote their brands. Uh, we use it as well. Uh, blogs and forums are always a good avenue as well because it's sort of, it gives the opportunity for candidates to see a, a real world experience of what it is to work within that organization. And that's really important uh, today when you're trying to attract that talent because, you know, it's one thing to sort of put a marketing slick out there and talk about, you know, what the company is. But when, when candidates are actually able to sort of hear from first person results of people that are working within the brand, um, it promotes it that much better and gives it that much more of a, a tangible real world feel. Looking at candidates from a uh, you know, campus uh, community, um, some of that, especially in, in that market target audience, when you talk about the age group, they're really looking for the experience. So they wanna know what it's like to work there as opposed to sort of all the fringe benefits. They wanna really understand what are the opportunities, what's it like to work within that organization. And you'll see the top brands typically use online forums. So it gives a, a dialogue, a two-way street to sort of promote, talk about their brand, talk about their organization, but then also allows that campus uh, market to sort of talk back, ask questions, uh, inquires to you know what's great about the organization and really understand what are some of the key features that that would draw them there and then while most of the top brand organizations define their strategy work within their organization to execute it facilitate it they also look for partners to help facilitate that so um, Hudson for example we use uh, with quite a few of our partners um, we, we employ a employee brand specialist that'll come in and talk with our clients and advise on specific strategies and ways that they can operate. Um, there's multiple channels, multiple partners out there that you'll find within the, uh, the HRO community that can help to, uh, to achieve this. But I think what's really important about this metric is um, when you look at the top brands, um, there's a significant increase in their focus on the strategy and that ultimately produces better results. So like I said, it's, it's easy to go out and sort of design sort of the solution that gets you talent for the immediate need, but for the long term and the growth of your organization, it's really important to have a strategy that's something you can build on and continue to adapt and evolve over the course of, of the next few years. And then uh, as I talked about earlier, so top brands involve more than just internal departments, it's really about the stakeholders. So it's not just HR and the C-suite, but it's marketing, communications, public relations, outside sales partners, inside sales partners. So anybody that effectively touches your organization internally and externally are all key partners that you wanna sort of involve into 
your employer brand. They all have a view of your organization and they all have some significant input that you can start to bring back into your message to tailor it to the different avenues that you're gonna ultimately communicate to. And then, you know, there's always the other events. So it's not just the communication, it's not just the marketing, but working through employee events um, really sort of build out the brand. So we've talked about that over the past couple days, uh, but it's really evident in some of the feedback that we've seen. So top brands by far and away, uh, when they engage their employees, both internally to then drive external communication, um, that shows significant results. And one of the bigger things, again, tying into the big data discussion just a few minutes ago, that we found is that measuring the return on investment of your employer brand is extremely important. It's not something that a lot of companies are doing, and this is by far one of the most important things that need to really be adopted. Um, by driving that measurement, by looking at how you can ultimately then promote it and go back to your, your executive team to then show them the benefits of it, it really changes the dynamic of the discussion. So rather than it being a request, it's more about really defining the strategy and showing them why it's so important, that it's something that they should and have to do as opposed to something that they'd like to do. So in summary, so what separates the best from the rest, it's essentially you know, having a clearly defined strategy um, and a value proposition, involving your C-level suite, um, using more social networks and media channels, uh, so there's no one silver bullet. I think it's making sure that part of your strategy is identifying the various uh, media channels that work best for your organization and how to use them effectively. Uh, significantly investing more uh, than others in your employee brand. So again, it's not necessarily a significant or a specific dollar value. It's about making sure that it is something that is tracked and measured and has a, a purpose behind it. Um, leveraging those online forums Again, that two-way dialogue and communication, bringing that talent into your sort of four walls uh, from the outside and making sure that they understand your culture and your organization is, uh, is extremely important. Seeing you know, the, the successful strategies from leveraging external partners, uh, again, it's, it's really important that you talk to everybody that, that touches your organization and does business with them. They all have a viewpoint and they all have something significant that they can help you uh, to achieve your messaging. And then ultimately engaging your employees, uh, it starts with them. So employees internally that are engaged are then going to turn around and engage external candidates to bring them into your organization and show that, uh, that that's where you want to, uh, to work. That's it. All right. Big round of applause for Tony Martin from Hudson. <clears throat> now, the staff of HRO today has certain recommendations based on the research. The 16% that are saying, yes, we measure ROI, we need to give those people a promotion. The 61% that are not, they need to be brought into the fold. The 22% that bizarrely said don't know should be moved to a different career path. How do you not know? <laughs> Just, I don't know how you not know. Then I guess I need a different career path.